Hello, my fellow American Motorsports viewers, and salutations as well to the people watching from countries that we have conquered. European cars comes in, you know, and since this is America and we love freedom, man, I ain't turning away. You're still going to do the wheels on it. But, uh, you know, it's a little bit different on one of them European cars than it is on, you know, say, a Ram, an F-150, Silverado, a Mustang, you know, all the other cars. So one of my monster drinking, flat brim hat wearing, blueberry vaping, hippie communist acquaintances has commented on me this Volkswagen GTI which I believe was personally assembled by Adolf Hitler. Now the first major difference we're going to talk about is that these vehicles are front wheel drive, presumably because they were assembled on the other wrong side of the world. Since it's front wheel drive, leaving it in gear when you jack up the front won't keep the car from rolling backwards. So make sure that you set the handbrake extra tight and use a wheel chalk for safety. There's a few different methods we can use to apply torque to the front wheel lugs to get them loosened up before we remove the wheel. Now, you may have noticed that I said lugs and not lug nuts. And that's because of these European cars, the big difference the way wheels mounted, they use what we just call a lug bolt here. It's like a lug nut and a stud in one. So when the wheel comes on and off, the only thing you can hang the wheel on is that little flame, and then you gotta line it up and, and put one of these in there and then thread it in. That can be kind of hard. So one of the first things we've got to talk about here is uh, you may have heard some rumors about systems of measurement. You got the one measurement system for countries that have been to the moon, uh, have won all the world wars. That's the American Imperial Ale system of measurements. Looks like a 11 sixteenths. That's the size they use on these. They're just quick science and engineering lesson for everybody. Torques is measured in foot pounds. Now this is about that's about a foot long breaker bar. So again, this is why the imperial system of the units is better because you always got a quick reference for feet season and stuff. Uh, so it's about a foot long breaker bar and I weigh about 200 pounds. Despite me drinking a lot of Bud Light, which I assume would make you lighter, it turns out that like Bud Heavies, they also make you heavier. All right, so go and put a bad boy up on there. It looks like one of them's already missing. That makes this job easier. All right, and then just get the one leg on there. Boom, easy. Now that's all well and good, but you just can't spend all day using this breaker bar, but you really need some power tools. So enter the impact gun. Now there's a lot of cool things about the impact air gun. For one, it's shaped like a gun, which we love in America. Hell yeah. Another thing is powered by air. So you don't gotta do a lot of the heavy lifting yourself, you just hook it up to your air compressor. Right there, turn it up as high as it'll go. Pull that trigger right there, hell yeah. So impact guns, they don't use foot pounds of torques. They use a unit of measure known as ugga duggets. And when we start using this thing here, you're gonna hear the signature sound of the impact gun, which is the ugga dugga. All right, so first question you might have, you know, when you break a bar, you just turn it one way or the other, you know. Well, with the, with the air gun, well, how do you know which way is which? Well, right here it says F and R, I've been told. I cannot read. Um, and it's got this little button and the button will determine which way is which. So back this way, that's counterclockwise, I've been told. I also cannot read a clock. And the forward, that's the forward's ways. Now the good news is you don't really have to worry about this. What you can do is just lead it in the forward direction all the time. All right, so just take the impact gun here, like I said. Front ways, back ways don't really matter. If 
you give it at least like a hundred dug of dugas and it doesn't want to come off, you can you can try going the other way. Sometimes that helps. Not always though. All right, there we go. That one came out real good. Now, before we get too far along, I'm gonna have to jack the car up because you know don't want the wooden dagger on fall off and the car still on the ground. So you're supposed to use like these little hockey puck things when you put it on there, but seeing as how this ain't pot smoking hippie liberal Canada. Uh, I ain't gonna use no daggone maple syrup coated hockey puck. Just gonna jack this guy up on literally anywhere is fine. All right, so I put my jack stand under there. Now I'm get my unleash my ugly nuggets and all the daggone wheel bolts here. Here you go. Watch this. Easy spot. here some little faces and the deal is this is what's called hub centric so this little face here is supposed to made up with the hub flange I'm gonna show you the hub flange in a second now the problem is the European manufacturers didn't really standardize what you would call the size of the hub flange what they do is they make it real big they make it as big as it needs to be and then you put little rings in there put little rings in there like this and the rings will shrink it down to be the size that you need for your particular car. Now, the damn, some big ass truck just went by, but it's probably full of the women. All right, so this rang sits down in there. Now, herein lies one of the problems with this, right? So if this rang don't sit in here totally flush, there's a little catwalk is like this right here. So you can put the ring in like this, and you can mount the wheel on, and you can tighten it down and get all your ugly duggets that you want, and you'll think, oh, it's good to go. But then what will happen as you're driving, and this ring is going to settle down in there a little bit. I ain't going to bang it in too hard because I don't want to be able to not get it out. And then, uh, and then suddenly your bolts are going to be loose, the wheel is going to wobble a little bit, and then all hell is going to break loose, and so is your wheel. All right, and then you're going to come out with a three-wheel Volkswagen, which uh, that's happened to a couple of my friends for. So how do you avoid this? What I did is what any red-blooded American good old boy would do, which is I fired up Autodesk Inventor, and I drew me up a hub-centric ring right here like this, that's the correct size, and uh, I loaded it up as a STL file into Iger and I printed it out on a Mark Forge 3D printer. This uses a uh, material known as Onyx, which is, uh, I think it's from Wakanda. You know, like little chop fibers or carbon fiber in it, so it's, it makes your car faster and lighter. Just put the guy in there, you'll see the notice the difference right away, right? See the other one didn't want to go in there right? See this one I've drawn correctly. Slides right in there real nice and neat. Now, the hub flange here, this is what the wheel is going to center up on before, before the lug bolts go in. Now, like I said, it's real hell of annoying because there's no studs, so you just throw it up there. So when you first mount the wheel, boom, hub bore goes on the hub flange. Now, like I said, without the hub-centric ring, this is a real loose fit. So then when you tighten down your lug bolts, the wheel won't really be on there centered. Now, you don't really see this on American cars because America's roads are made primarily of potholes, and all our vehicles have 42-inch super swampers on them. 
So you know, it ain't a really big deal if it's centered up or not. On the stock wheels, you don't need the ring and, and they fit right down tight in this, but with the aftermarket rims, it's gotta fit on there. So again, just showing you, when you put the wheel on, if you put it on like this, you're gonna have a bad day. It's gonna tighten down and get your ugga but then it's gonna come loose when you start driving. It's gotta go on there totally flush, just straight like that. Speaking of flush, now this, this rotor here, it's held on, you see it's a little loose right there? It's held on by um, them little set screws that go in here. Now you'll notice, they ain't in there, all right? Anyways, you can take those out and you can replace them with literally any screw you find in your garage. Now it is important that this surface here remains flat, just like the earth. All right, so things can get even a little bit weirder if you got a spacer going on here, right? So, spacer, it's got a chamfer on one side of it. Let's it sit down in there nice and flush and you want to line the bolt holes up. Now see this particular one ain't lining up really great because this uh, literally any screw that I put in there is a little proud, but you know, like I said, it, I'll make it a few miles for it falls off probably, you're fine. So you put that on there, right? Now you got a nice wheel. Well again, ain't no studs. So that makes life a little bit difficult. So what you can do, take your, your hub centric spacer, chamfer side, in towards the car, put the ring in there, just like that. It's just in there nice pretty. Okay. You can line it up like this. Now take one of your, your lug bolts. What I like to do is uh, hold it with my thumb and just kind of eyeball it so it goes in there and then just throw it up just like that. All right? There it is. So it's in there now. All right? Now take your air and pack. Get it started there just so it holds it up. Now you got it in there. Don't torque it down too much because you gotta, you gotta get the other ones in there lined up for torque it all down. All right. There it is. Now don't worry about cross threading it. I mean, tight to tight. Come on, get the ugly duggies. Oh, I should put on my safety glasses here. Use an air in fact. All right, and that's that's four out of five little bolts at this point. Get on there, just really any particular direction, pat it on out. You see, you have a majority of the lugs, you know, at least three. And uh, yeah, you just, just keep on hammering with the air impact until you hear that ugly duggy sound like a lot of times. Understand the course that way when we were scrapey scrapey and the wheel came off. I'll stop. Oh, oh hell no.
stand up in the trailer, she'd have run. Well, that'll go high.